Hi everyone, I'm Alisa Mulak Alvarez. Thank you so much for watching Save With Stories, a fundraising campaign for the benefit of Save the Children Philippines, an organization dedicated to protect and help children learn at home during COVID-19. If you can, please donate at bit.ly slash savewithstoriesph to provide a child with a learning kit. So today, I am reading Pipit and the Kamagong Tree by Becky Santos Herodias and illustrated by Corinne C. Banal. In a small grove, not far from Mount Tasha's rice field, lives a very old kamagong tree. Though not as high as its other timber fellows, this one is quite easy to spot. Its woody frame is very dark, almost like black. Its branches hang more upright than the others, reaching up the sky like hands in prayer. One can tell by its thick scarred trunk that this tree has lived through many changing seasons. Despite this appearance, it remains exceptionally beautiful, especially when it is the only one of its kind left among the other trees. One day, a cheerful peepit came upon the kamagong tree. Perhaps tired from flying, it perched on one of its branches, chirping as though announcing its arrival. Peepit's tiny claws sickled the tree and woke it from its sleep. Good day, my friend, greeted the kamagong tree. Hello, big tree. I'm Peepit, and I live in a nearby rice paddy. Sorry to have disturbed you this early, the little brown bird apologized. That's all right. It is not every day someone pays me a visit. What brings you here, if I may ask? Hmm, nothing really. I'm just curious. I've always wondered how it's like inside the woods. Peepee -pee paused, looked around, and continued. I think I like the view from here a lot better than the one from the top. I like seeing all sorts of green. Kamagong felt pleased and smiled. You're welcome here anytime. Really? Well, thank you. Peepit flew from branch to branch, excited with his new find, he took a plunge to the ground to check what was there to see. He turned his eyes to the four moss-covered stumps that were still tightly tucked to the ground. What strange looking trees. What are they called? He asked Kamagong. They're Kamagong trees, just like me. Wood gatherers from this town sometimes call us iron wood. That's interesting. Why do they call you that name? Peepit asked further. That's because our wood is the toughest among all trees. It takes great effort to cut us down. We're known to blunt the sharpest steel saw or axe. How come they were able to cut your friends? Sad to say, they've grown tired of living here. They wanted to go places and become something else, the tree explained. It was Mang Tasho and his men who first noticed our kind. We learned from them how much we were sought by the people in the city. Wood carvers turn us into different things that sell at very high prices. My friends like this idea. Hoping for a better life, they willingly gave in to Mang Tasha's plan. Unfortunately, I've not heard from them since. Now look what was left of them. Kamagong sobbed. Pointing one branch to the left, the tree continued. If you go farther that way, you'll see more of these lifeless remains. Pipi didn't know what to say. He felt sorry for Kamagong. He sensed his loneliness. He assured him, though, he'll be back some other time. True enough, Pipit saw Kamagong once again. More visits came afterwards. No doubt the little bird was happy living in Mang Tasha's farm, where food and home were just within reach. 
However, he came to enjoy flying the distance and spending time above the ground, talking with Kamagong about almost anything. Kipit's cheerful company was certainly a welcome change in Kamagong's lonely life inasmuch as Pipit found the same in Kamagong's kindness. Without knowing it, an unspoken friendship had already taken shape. Every summer, when the earth becomes very hot and dry, Pipit would sit and relax under Kamagong's cool shade. Its limbs were also a safe place to stay whenever farm snakes came to hunt in the rice paddy. In the harshest rains and winds, on the other hand, the same branches serve as Pipit's cozy shelter. In return, Pipit delighted Kamagong with his songs and fancy flying movements. From time to time, too, he would peck on pesty beetles that ate away the tree's new leaves. Several planting seasons passed and the two friends kept in touch. After the last harvest, Pipit came to Kamagong crying. Mang Tasha sold this farm. The new owners plan to build houses there soon, the poor bird announced. I have to find a new place to stay. I'm so sorry, but I have to go. Pipit flew off right away before Kamagong could say a word. He felt bad for not having the chance to say goodbye. That day, Pipit reached as far as the town plaza. Luckily, he found a small vegetable patch in the backyard of an old couple. Pipit saw a nice dry spot behind some bushes where he stayed for the night. The following day, Pipit flew around his new home. The nearby backyards also had gardens where lots of plants and young trees grew. This seems to be a nice place to stay. Finding food here will not be a problem, Pipit thought to himself. Suddenly, he heard a roaring noise. It was coming from a tricycle on its way down the street. Without thinking, he followed the moving vehicle. It led him to a busy place where there were more people, houses, and rides like the one he went after. He rested on a lamppost and eagerly watched the action below. After a while, he saw something fly over his head. He looked around to check where it had come from. Below, he saw some boys throwing stones at a tree by the roadside. He couldn't believe what he saw. The tree looked so much like his friend Kamagong, only it had fruits. His eyes widened when he saw four more of this tree along the street. He flew closer to one and finally realized it was indeed a Kamagong tree. The next morning, Pipit found himself flying back to the grove. Unfortunately, he saw Kamagong in terrible pain. His trunk had deep wounds and one of its branches broken. Mang Tasha and his men tried to cut me down again. I fought with all my might. I didn't want to be like the others. I want to live even if I'm just by myself. Besides, I was thinking you might come back and need me. Kamagong confessed to Pipit. Pipit's heart sank and felt so touched. He thought fast and decided not to tell Kamagong about his plan. Instead, he promised him to come by as often as he could. Since then, Pipit started bringing in the seeds of the fruit from the trees at the town plaza. Without telling Kamagong, Pipit had already planted them in the woods. He hoped these seeds would grow tall and full someday, and best of all, sturdy like his best friend. Many years passed, and Pipit's wish came true. Young Kamagong trees surround the grove once again. More than ever, old Kamagong stands thankful and proud. He is happy with his growing family and is hopeful for the bright things to come. And just like the good old days, Kamagong looks forward to Pipit's friendly visits, this time with Pipit birdies in tow. The end. We hope you enjoyed the story. And again, 
If you want to donate, you can donate at bit.ly slash Thank you very much and stay tuned for the next Save It Stories video.